Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are revisiting the memory expansion board for the 3DFX Voodoo card. In previous videos, which you may have seen, I demonstrated how two of these boards can increase the memory size of the Maxi Gamer 3D from 4 to 8 MB. These videos are still applicable and available on my channel if you haven't seen them yet. But it is not required to watch them right now because I will provide enough information to you in today's video so you can construct your own upgrade modules using Revision 1.1. The majority of the assembly process will be the same as in the previous revision, but should there be any differences, I will point them out. Now let's examine the differences between revision 1.0 and 1.1. A significant problem I encountered with the initial boards I produced was the challenging alignment of the sockets with the memory modules on the Voodoo card. Initially I just soldered the sockets onto the board, relying solely on the markings on the PCB to achieve an acceptable fit. Unfortunately, even the slightest misalignment of the sockets can lead to an imperfect fit, resulting in various issues when operating the 3DFX card. In the new revision, I tried to address this issue by adding holes to the outer solder pads. These holes reveal the corner pins of each socket, allowing you to adjust the location of the PCB and ensuring that the pins align with the pads. You will see how to secure the sockets with silicon later in the video. Another small issue I noticed after the board was completed is that the connectors for the cables to the Voodoo chipset were not in the optimal order. In revision 1.0, the two cables coming from the FBI chip crossed when attaching them to the connector of the memory board. I know this is a minor issue, but when I attached the board to the FBI chip for the very first time, I did notice this slight inconvenience. It is fixed in revision 1.1 by reordering the pads and the connectors. And finally, I have updated the font size and the text placements. The text is now easier to read, particularly on the pins that connect to the Voodoo chips. Other than that, there is nothing else worth mentioning, except perhaps the new boards I have ordered are thinner. The yellow board has a thickness of 1.6mm, while the red board is only 1mm thick. I also decided to get a different color to easily distinguish between the old and the new revision of the memory board. There are more color options available and if you order from PCBWay.com you can choose your favorite color for your PCBs. I will probably go through all colors for different projects. Even if you do not know how to design your own PCBs, you can find many interesting projects on PCBWay's shared project space website. You will also be able to find revision 1.1 of the 3DFX Voodoo Memory Upgrade on PCBWay.com for you to order directly or download the Gerber files to tinker with the design. For another project I have lined up, I ordered blue PCBs with a thickness of 1.2mm. Take a look at pcbway.com and take advantage of a 5 US dollar welcome bonus when you sign up as a new customer. You will find the links to pcbway.com in the video description. As you might recall from my previous videos, we need to modify the sockets to fit over the current memory chips on the Voodoo card. The support structure inside the sockets hinders the chips from fully recessing and making good contact with the metal pins. I use a small wire cutter to remove the tiny plastic bridges. Once one side is cut, the connection to the socket wall usually breaks as well and you can easily remove the rest of the plastic. Removing the leftover plastic is optional. I choose to do it to enhance the aesthetics of the sockets and the overall appearance of the mod. Now we move on to a part of the assembly process that differs significantly between the two revisions of the memory board. For the old board, I relied on the markings on the PCB to position the sockets as accurately as possible in the center of each location and then I soldered them to the pads. The pins of the socket are concealed inside the housing, making it impossible to see the pins or the pads for proper alignment once they are placed on the PCB. So I really couldn't do anything else but to completely rely on the markings on the board. You can imagine that the slightest misalignment of a socket or a memory module on the Voodoo card could cause major issues and in the worst case a non-working memory board. I actually had one board that was particularly bad and eventually I had to scrap it. That board required multiple reseats until I got lucky and the board made proper contact with the Voodoo memory. Unfortunately you can only detect issues when you're running a 3D application. Anyway. With a new board, the pads on each edge have a hole, through which I can see if the socket below is properly aligned. First, I clip the sockets to the memory chips. Now the sockets are in the perfect place and we can align the PCB above the pins. You can see that not all connectors line up with the holes, but that is okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Important is to have the sockets aligned with the memory chips. Now I apply some electronic grade silicon and place the PCB above the sockets. This is the last time to make sure that the sockets align with the pads. Once satisfied, the silicone needs to dry for around 24 hours. 
It may also be a good idea to place a heavy object on the PCB to make sure the board is pressed against the sockets. The silicon is there to keep the PCB from sliding. It is not meant to provide any kind of support. With the silicon dried, we can check the socket alignment once more. Nothing should have changed and we should be able to see the pins of the sockets through the tiny holes of the pads. We leave the PCB attached to the Voodoo card and begin soldering the corner connectors of the sockets to the PCB, taking advantage of the holes. I do not know how well soldering would work without flux, but I can imagine that the solder would not flow nicely to the other side of the PCB through those holes. Here you can see how the solder does not form the typical shiny drop on the board. Gravity pulls the solder to the other side, through the hole and hopefully creates a bond between the socket pin and the pad. I leave the few pins that do not align properly alone. In my case, only two of the 16 pins total were not suitable to be soldered this way. Now it is finally time to carefully remove the memory board from the Voodoo card. Let's see if the solder actually flowed through the holes and attached the sockets to the board. And indeed, those pins look like they have been soldered to the PCB. Not only are the sockets now secured in place, they are also in the right position to match the memory chips of the Maxi Gamer 3D. To complete the board assembly, we still need to solder the remaining pins of the sockets, the memory chips on the other side and add the resistors and the pin headers. If you enjoyed the content so far, you can support me by giving this video a like. I must say, this mod fits really well and it looks good too. This may be the best board I've ever created for the FBI memory. Before running any benchmarks, I like to check if the additional memory is detected. In Everest, it shows that 8 MB of video memory is detected. That's fantastic. Now let's run 3 Mark 99 to verify that the card is functioning properly. Oh dear, it seems like there is an issue. I am absolutely certain that this is because of my memory mod. In the event you decide to create your own mod using the PCBs and you end up experiencing the same or a similar problem, let's consider what could be causing it. There is a jumper on the board that configures it for operation with either the TMU or the FBI chip of the Voodoo card. Make sure that it is correctly configured. In our case, the jumper is open, which indicates FBI operation. Another reason could be faulty memory but I tested the chips before I soldered them to the mod board. And yes, they were working fine, so this can also not be the issue. A third possibility could be a socket pin which is not soldered properly to the pad, but I tested each pin under the microscope. I usually take a toothpick and try to move each pin. If a pin is not firmly attached to a pad, you will be able to see the pin move. I do not believe that this is the problem either, because I checked the connections. And finally, the issue could be a solder bridge on the memory or on the socket pins. I do not recall having any solder bridges while adding the memory or the sockets. 
but this is more likely than any of the other scenarios. So let's inspect the memory and the sockets and look for solder bridges. I really like the red PCB and those solder joints. They do look really clean. I'm quite happy with the results. But there are no solder bridges. The memory looks good. So let's move on and inspect the memory sockets. At first sight, the pins look good. There is nothing obvious. But have a look how those pins of the socket look. They are flat and long. It could be that the solder bridge may hide somewhere not easily visible. Thanks to the microscope, I can get a clear look at each pin. So far there are no solder bridges. It is very unfortunate that this memory mod does not work. Maybe I have made a mistake when rerouting those connectors. Oh, there you go. Look at this. Here is the solder bridge. This solder bridge is hiding deep under the socket. I don't even blame myself for not seeing this. But here it is clearly visible that these two pins are connected to each other. I really hope this is the issue. This solder bridge is in a really unfortunate spot. But with a bit of flux, I'm sure we can turn this malfunctioning memory mod into a working one. And here we go. Nice. Before I test the mod again, I would like to express my gratitude to James, who has been my first Patreon supporter for the past two months. Your support means a lot to me, and I hope that more people will join the list of supporters of this channel in the future. If you wish to support me, you can become a Patreon member as well, where you will gain access to previews, behind the scenes content and the opportunity to connect with me. I have reattached the memory board to the Voodoo card and am ready to test it once more. Everest reports 8MB of video memory as it did before, but let's see if the 3 Mark benchmark will start and complete this time. That is already a good sign. This loading screen did not show up before. And here we go, we are finally flying through the streets. Ah, what a relief that this tiny solder bridge was the only issue. Now I'm confident that revision 1.1 is working. You can find this updated project on PCBWay's website and a direct link is in the video description. And with this we have reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the content and don't forget to give this video a like. If you want to see what I'm planning to do with those empty memory PCBs, then I suggest you subscribe to my channel to not miss the video when it goes live. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.